how enzymes reduce activation energy to catalyze chemical reactions. In order to understand this concept, it's first important that we know a couple of definitions. So first and foremost, what is an enzyme? An enzyme is a complex protein that speeds up chemical reactions. <clears throat> now we have an actual term for speeding up a chemical reaction. That's called catalysis. So it's catalyzing the chemical reaction. So when an enzyme speeds up a chemical reaction, it does this by lowering something called activation energy. Activation energy is the, it's like an energy hurdle that the, en that the uh, reaction must cross in order to take place. So the, the enzyme is lowering this activation energy in order for the reaction to take place. So here's an example on a graph. So we have energy on the y-axis and reaction progress on the x. Um, so if we look at a simple chemical reaction, do it a different color, yeah. A plus B yields A, B. So we're going to draw our first line without the enzyme. So it's going to look something like this. So here's your reactants, so A plus B. And then your products are going to be A, B. This right here, the energy that's needed to take place, so the y-axis, is your activation energy. So the presence of an enzyme essentially takes this reaction and makes it so that the activation energy is lower. So now you're left with this here. So it significantly decreases the activation energy needed for the reaction to take place. So one thing that's very important to note is that if you see here, the enzyme doesn't change the products or the reactants. It actually just, all it does is decrease the activation energy, so you start and end in the same place. So just remember, enzymes don't change product or reactant just decrease activation energy. A way to visualize the function of enzymes is by this model over here. So we have the substrate and the enzyme, and the space in between where the substrate will bond, bind to the enzyme is the active site. And you can see that the shape of the enzyme fits the substrate perfectly, kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Because different enzymes have different functions, so they will um, their shape will be tailored to a sp each specific substrate, which is the reactants. So as the uh, reaction occurs, and the enzymes work on their reactants in order to produce the product, the product's shape will no longer fit in the enzyme that was tailored for the substrate. Therefore, the product will just pop out of the enzyme. And if you have a hard time visualizing it this way, you can kind of think of it as a key in a lock, where our key is our substrate or our reactants, and the key is the enzyme, and you, this lock part being the active site. So only one specific key will turn a specific lock. So just like one substrate will fit in one kind of enzyme, right? So um, once you the reaction has occurred, you'll have something like an open door as your product. Uh, a real-world example of this is a reaction of carbon dioxide plus water to give you carbonic acid. And this is actually a reaction that occurs in our blood to regulate our pH. And you can see and the enzyme that is used is carbonic anhydrase. And you can see that the activation energy without um, the assistance of an enzyme is quite high, whereas the activ activation energy with the enzyme is lower, and therefore the reaction occurs quicker. And if our body was not able to carry out this reaction fast enough with the assistance of the enzyme, um, we would not be able to su sustain life as our blood pH would be off. Um, however, you can still see that with the assistance of the enzyme, we still start with the same reactants and end with the same products.